You ready? Call me Nora. Okay, welcome to the Queen Anne's County Commissioner's meeting. This is a public meeting that is being aired live on our local cable television station, QAC TV7. These media broadcasts provide county citizens an opportunity to watch and review our scheduled public meetings. In addition to our live audience this evening, we are providing remote options for citizens to watch and participate in county commissioner meetings. Citizens may watch our meeting live on our website at www.qac.org slash live or on our television channel, Breeze Line Channel 7 and High Definition Channel 507. Citizens may also participate by joining the live Zoom meeting by going to www.qac.org slash public comment. Citizens may also email comments to public comment at qac.org. Comments received will be read during the press and public comment period on this evening's agenda. We acknowledge your participation and by attending, you acknowledge that this session is both recorded and aired. Press and public comment will be taken and is limited to three minutes per person. If you care to speak, please sign the sheet on the information table out in the lobby. Comments longer than three minutes can be submitted in writing for the commissioner's review. We will now stand and be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Commission President Chris Corcorino. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you could uh, please remain standing for the uh, victims of the New York City subway attack today. Thank you. I'd like to extend the uh, moment of silence one more moment for the loss of uh, one of our county employees this week, Paul Siebel. Thank you. All right, commissioners, that brings us to the uh, today's, this evening's agenda. Our agenda today for our meeting April 12th, along with the regular closed session and sanitary district minutes from your March 22nd meeting, along with the budget workshop minutes from March 29th, March 31st, and April 5th have all been circulated for review. Are there any noted additions and or corrections? I'd like to make a motion to add two action items to tonight's agenda. Second. Okay. All right. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion to accept the amended agenda and the minutes as submitted. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Both motions carry. Okay. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, we just held a closed session under um, General Provisions Article Section 3305B1 to discuss boards and commissions, and uh, no decisions were made in our executive closed session. So that brings us to press and public comments, our first period. So thank you for, th for taking the time to express your views to the county commissioners. Comments are limited to three minutes per person. Comments longer than three minutes may be submitted in writing. This commission respects your desire and right to convey your message freely. When you come forward, please speak clearly at the standing microphone. State your name, address, and topic of interest. In keeping with the dignity of our office, we ask that all views be expressed expressed in a respectful and civil manner. All right. Everybody Anyone sign up? Do we have anybody online? No All right. Okay. Is there anybody who wanted to speak during press and public comment? All right. Well, we'll close the first okay. press public comment. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. Uh, we can move into presentations, commissioners. Uh, first up, we have Susan Coppage and her guests here this evening for character counts. And... Um, I believe this month is trustworthiness. It is. All right, Susan. Hi, Susan Coppage. I'm the director of social services, but also the co-chair of the Character Counts Advisory Board. Um, Kelly couldn't be here tonight, so she sent me in her place. Um, I hope I do her justice. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a short update on character counts, and then I have some guests to introduce. Um, we have coaches back in the classrooms. We've added a few new coaches. We have about um, 80 coaches now. We um, also had QAC TV that produced another fun video for us. That video starred about a dozen of the coaches and Sheriff Hoffman as well as Dr. Salins. Um, it was on all six of the character counts pillars this time. 
You can find that on QAC TV, the YouTube channel, along with the other Character Counts Super Show episodes. <laughs> um, we also have our Character Counts Appreciation Celebration coming up. That's um, being planned and invites have gone out. We're hoping that you all will be able to join us. It's on Thursday, May 12th from 6 to 7.30 at the Kramer Center. We've released our Character Counts Faye Lister Teen of Character Scholarship. It's a $500 scholarship. It's sponsored by the Centerville Rotary, and it's available for a um, Queen Anne's County graduating senior. It went out mid-March. Applications are due April 29th. The applicants are asked to write a short essay sharing examples of how they implement Character Counts values into their lives and how they use the six pillars as a guide. We also have the Jackie Carter Young People Who Care Award. That paperwork is being released, released this week. It's sponsored by the Queen Anne's County Children's Council. There are two awards, they're $500 each, and they're available to Queen Anne's County middle school or high school youth that want to implement a youth-led service project in the county. Last year, there were two winners. One was on Ken Island, and they organized a beach cleanup and the other was in Sudlersville, our Scout Troop 175 that are here today. Um, they completed an outdoor reading area up at the Family Center in Sudlersville. One last thing, um, we have, we've been working with um, the Edge Arena and the Edge Foundation. They're partnering with us. They're trying to instill positive character traits in our youth, and they're actually going to help us do some recruiting of coaches. So thank you to Robert Woolley and Colleen Williams. So our Southersville Scout Troop 175 is here tonight. We have some scouts, some scout leaders and parents. Um, we have two scouts that are actually would like to speak. So John Hinton and Matt Carter, if you want to come up. up. Have a seat. Hello, my name is John Hinton and I am a Tenderfoot Scout with Troop 175 of Southersville, Maryland. And I'd like to introduce those scouts over there as well. <laughs> <laughs> introduce yourselves. Nice and loud. All right, um, my name is Mark Ingram with Troop 175. And, um, I am a scout rank soon to achieve the Tenderfoot rank. My name is Spencer Wildman and I am a uh, my name is Ben Hinton, and I also have scout rank. Very okay. good. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Yeah. The six pillars of character mean a lot to scouts and are embraced in the scout law and oath that we live by and live to uphold. Thank you for allowing us to write a proclamation for this month's pillar of trustworthiness. It is an honor. Hi, my name is Matt Carter. I am a life scout with Troop 175. Um, allow me to share a few things we love about scouting, making friendships that last a lifetime, um, learning outdoor and everyday skills, frequent camping and field trips, visiting places we never could or would without scouting, fun, eventful, and challenging adventures, positive outlet with plenty of characters, and inclusive activities for all ages and abilities, and giving back to our community. Very good. Great. So I have the, the privilege of reading the proclamation. Um, proclamation 22-25, whereas Queen Anne's County was declared a Characters Counts community, and whereas all citizens have been called upon to embrace the six pillars of character and incorporate them into their daily lives, and whereas the Character Counts pillar of the month of April is trustworthiness, and whereas the Scouts, uh, Boy Scouts of America shows the pillar uh, in its oath and, its, uh, and law, and where scouts uh, in their everyday life, the scout law by being trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. And whereas Troop 175 has the integrity to keep our promise to be honest, remain loyal, and to stay true to one's word. And whereas it's proclaimed that Boy Scout Troop of America, Troop 170, Five, keeps its promise to do its duty to God and country and to serve its community. Now, therefore, 
the Queen Anne's County Commissioners do hereby designate the Characters Counts Pillar of the Month to be trustworthiness. Good job. Um, it looks like he's got, he's got one already. He's got one. Will you make sure that everybody gets one of those? One in there. Yep. Got plenty up there. Get them. Get in this one. He's already got a pen. Yeah. Yeah, that's a thank you. Thing. We thank you for your continued right. support. Thank you very yeah. much, Susan. Very well done. You guys want to get a picture or anything? Or yeah. yeah. Let's do picture that. of scouts? Yeah. Hold on, sure. Susan. Wait a minute, Susan. Hold on. All right, next up we have uh, a proclamation 2222 for Flood Awareness Month. Uh, we have Miss Amy Mordock, the Director of the Department of Planning and Zoning. This is uh, tab six, item two, page two. Good evening. I got it. I got it. Yeah, I do. Okay. Okay. All right, um, proclamation 22 22. Whereas each year floods in the United States kill more people and destroy more property than any other natural hazard. Queen Anne's County residents may become injured or their property suffer from the damage due to severe flooding, especially during the spring and summer months. And whereas the findings of the fourth national climate assessment indicated that the frequency and intensity of heavy precipitation events across the Northeast United States have increased since the beginning of the last century and that this trend is projected to continue and that in Maryland, scientists and meteorologists have observed a 5 to 10 percent increase in precipitation from 1958 to 2015. And whereas since circa 1970, there has been an increase in Atlantic hurricane activity. And the 2021 hurricane season was the third most active season on record and produced 21 named storms. It was also the second season in a row after 2020 and third overall in which the designated 21 named list of storms names was exhausted. And whereas the number of intense storms is predicted to increase and recent sea level rise projections from Maryland range from likely probability of 0.4 to 0.9 to a 1% probability of 2.3 feet by 2050, depending on emissions impacts. And that the sea level rise will flood dry areas, particularly on the eastern shore where Queen Anne's County is located, increasing the depth of the flooding, shifting regulatory floodplains further inland and extending the reach of storm surges generated by coastal storms. And whereas many county residents are at risk and may be unaware of these changes and be uninsured or underinsured against flood hazards. And whereas spring and summer weather with increasing incidence of nuisance flooding requires residents of the Eastern Shore and Queen Anne's County to take extra precautions to ensure being safe at home during severe weather or while traveling, which includes always being up to date on weather forecasts and having an emergency kit at home and in their vehicles. And whereas the commissioners of Queen Anne's County joined the Queen Anne's County Department of Emergency Services, Department of Planning and Zoning, and Department of Public Works to encourage all county residents to learn more about the different flood hazards faced by individuals and communities across the state, and to provide information on what county residents can do to protect themselves, their property and possessions, their finances, and communities from flooding and severe weather. And now, therefore, we, the county commissioners of Queen Anne's County, do hereby proclaim April 2022 Flood Awareness Month in Queen Anne's County. That's a mouthful. Yes, it is. Thank you very much. Uh, it was in uh, 2021 that the governor first made this proclamation. And at that time, uh, a group that a lot of my colleagues here in Queen Anne's County uh, were uh, very active with the Maryland Association of Stormwater and Floodplain Managers, the MAFSM group, um, through John Kling at uh, DPW and our partners at OES, and through the help of Beth Molaski, who's here tonight, 
we were able to push out the notices and participate in Flood Awareness Month last year. And so I'm very happy, even though sandwiched in between the two proclamations that this has been, it's kind of anticlimactic. <laughs> um, however, I'm really uh, happy that we have this proclamation on the books and uh, Beth is already pushing out our announcements uh, for this April and we'll do it every year through our continued collaboration with all of the county agencies who are directly involved in making sure that all of our residents are the best informed that they can be because the tides keep shifting. So, so, so um, could, you, could you update, when was the last time the, the floodplains were uh, adjusted as far as um, where they set the bar for, for uh, water rise? Uh, and, what, and how it affects uh, flood insurance premiums and eligibility? So FEMA has systematically updated floodplain maps, which were first on some, some jurisdictions in the 78, and the Eastern Shore was mapped in 84. So in 2014, the Eastern Shore got uh, updated floodplain maps. Okay. So that's pretty recent uh, in terms of mapping history and the exercise was extensive. So we have really good floodplain maps. We have mapped our limit of wave action which takes into account uh, storm surges and waves in our uh, uh, coastal hazard areas. We are also through a lot of other planning exercises looking at sea level rise and the impact of uh, the two foot and the four foot rise that is being mapped in our vulnerability assessment through that inundation model. We're also looking at nuisance flooding, which a lot of neighborhoods are seeing flooding where they've never seen it before. So our hazard mitigation planning and resiliency planning efforts are all coming together through stormwater, um, floodplain management, and trying to stay current with the, um, the most advanced modeling that we have at our disposal. So, so is there a place um, where citizens go to to find out uh, based on their address if they're in a floodplain or not, and if they are, um, what to what degree? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that question. That's a good it's thing a, that Beth and I will work <laughs> on. <laughs> we'll uh, work on putting together a list of resources because there are there are really great resources that. Um, the, our um, flood mapping resources where all you have to do is put in your address and it brings up your flood map. But there are also resources that go a step beyond and look at long-term projections. So I'll get together with Beth and that can be one of our April announcements. Okay. And then how many uh, triggers are built into our floodplain maps that affect the building code itself in terms of um, the water rise, um, whether you have to have pylons or whether you have to have first floor, I know like now it's like 10 foot, I think a bump, mean high tide or whatever it is, something like that. Well, yes, it depends on what whatever zone you're in. Right now we have a two foot freeboard requirement, um, which means that whatever your floodplain elevation is, your first floor of your building has to be two feet above that map floodplain. Uh, there are requirements in terms of what types of a foundation you uh, are required to have per building code if you are in a high hazard area uh, where there is um, inundation of um, wave high energy wave action where engineered plans are required. There are floodway requirements that um, involve requirements for breakaway walls. Uh, flood vents, it's all uh, codified through the National Flood Insurance Program and in the building code. But they don't push building codes out 10 years. In other words, if you have a 10-year floodplain map and you're looking 10 years down the road and this place is underwater, our building codes don't match that now, correct? Um, well, the building code isn't based on what your floodplain elevation is. It's not based on the numbers. It's based on the condition. So if you're in a 1% chance of annual flood or 2% chance, it was the old 100 year floodplain. Okay. If you're in that floodplain, there are certain building code provisions that are required. If you're in a uh, coastal hazard area, there are certain provisions that are required. So it's not set specific to what your numbers are. But you don't look ahead is what I'm saying. In other words, we don't look 15 years down the road. You know, we have projections obviously, and you see them all the time where people are putting projections. So 
should, if we're going to build a house in an area now today that 15 years from now we say is going to be two feet underwater, shouldn't we be taking some kind of a in the building codes now to uh, adjust for that? Our hazard mitigation plan calls for actions like that. Okay. So it's just getting the support to go above and beyond right. um, existing standards is something that is incentivized. Uh, John Klang has been working on the community rating system which is a uh, system in which each community, if they have certain practices that go above and beyond the, um, the standard practices, you can get a better rating system. Yeah. And then overall, the entire community's uh, flood rates are reduced. Yeah. So there are things like that contribute to the county receiving a high rating. So support for initiatives like that is vital. I, I, yeah, I, I, from personal experience in writing flood insurance years ago, I know that Queen Anne's County and our planning and zoning staff, um, as well as DPW, do a wonderful job in making sure that that um, we're getting good rates because of our participation in the program, the accuracy of our, our flood levels. So, yeah, kudos. <clears throat> Thank you for the proclamation. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Okay, Commissioners, our next uh, presenter is uh, Miss Mary Beth Johnson, and we have a proclamation for Month of the Young Child. So, Mary Beth, and uh, this is uh, tab six, item three, page three. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Um, I think that I'm first going to have um, Eric Johnson, who is the chairperson of the Children's Council, say a couple words. Tell them to keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a wise mentor of mine once said, remember the five B's. He said, be brief, brother, be brief. Um, <laughs> it goes without saying how much we appreciate the opportunity to come before you to talk about one of the most important resources in our community, our youth, our children. Um, we've been doing Month of the Young Child for some time now, and you all have continued to be supportive there. For your attention, just wanted to remind you all of something that's kind of neat and that is the idea that the Children's Council has been in existence as of last year for 50 years and was driven of course by um, state legislation that was repealed soon th thereafter and so we're one of the only counties in the state of Maryland that has maintained a county body around children and youth so just wanted to thank you for your continued support and also to publicly thank Mary Beth Johnson who's been one of our officers in some position or other we have not let her go um, for probably a decade now so with that, I'm going to turn it over to her. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, good evening, and thank you, commissioners, for taking time out to recognize the wonderful children of Queen Anne's County once again. Um, my name is Mary Beth Johnson. I'm the chairperson for the Month of the Young Child Committee for the Queen Anne's County Council for Children and Youth. Um, also, in the audience, we have a few council members. If you want to raise your hand, we have co-chair Elizabeth Miller and a few other. We also have Mike Clark, who has come to support us. I know you all know Mike. Um, this year, 2022, is the 25th annual proclamation sponsored by the Children's Council, so it's a special year for us. We actually went back to the first year and used the same theme this year as we did for the first year, so you'll see what that is in a minute. Um, and as you know, the Council was formed to act as an advocate for children and families. It is comprised of members of the business community, government agencies, and the community at large. Um, to celebrate the month of the young child and to recognize the youngest members of our community, we hold a poster contest for children ages two through pre-K and kindergarten through second grade. So tonight we honor the winners of this contest and I'd like to present them with their um, framed posters at this point. This, year, this year's poster contest theme was children are special because the children had to answer the question and draw a picture depicting their answer. So, of course, we had many great entries, um, over 300, but we can only choose two winners, and they are here today. The winner of the age two through pre-K category is Reese Young, and he attends Shine Like Stars uh, pre-K, or I'm sorry, threes class. And Reese's poster reads, children are special because they love each other. So we'd like to present this to Reese. Hello, oh, Reese. Okay, and the winner of the K 
kindergarten through second grade category is Layla Ward, and Layla is attends Ken Island Elementary School in second grade, and Layla's poster reads, children are special because we have big imaginations. And you can see how colorful it is. So, congratulations, Layla. Um, Tina Miles from Shore United Bank um, was scheduled to be here to present gift cards, but she had an emergency, so I'm just going to present Layla and Reese with a $50 gift card oh. from Shore United Bank. Right. They are very active in our community and very happy to present these. So Layla, here's $50 for you to use on what you want. And Reese, that's the same. Wow. Mm. Now so, and I guess if you guys want to read the proclamation, and can, do you have time to take pictures yeah, then? Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to read Proclamation 22-26. Whereas the month of April has been designated the month of the young child by the state of Maryland, and whereas children are vitally important to the state and to the future of this country, and whereas a safe and stable environment for our children is of importance to Queen Anne's County, and whereas we know that as a community we must ensure to, that our children are healthy emotionally, physically, intellectually, mentally, in order to promote successful growth in adulthood, and whereas we as a community know the importance of working with agencies and schools in helping our young children to be ready for school and continue to be successful in their school career. And whereas we recognize the importance of being intentional in building positive assets and opportunities for our children. And whereas we recognize the importance of seeing our children as a positive resource for the present and future of our community. And whereas we realize that it takes all community members to help our children grow in positive ways and in character. And whereas we call upon Queen Anne's County citizens to join together to ensure love, laughter, and encouragement in a daily part of our children's lives. Now, therefore, we, the County Commissioners of Queen Anne's County, do hereby designate the month of April as the month of the young child in Queen Anne's County. Sign the County Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. Position them where you want them. Uh, that chair can move over that way. And if you, could, if you two could separate the chairs and the children will stand up. Oh, right. yeah. There you go. There goes our arm. There goes our arm. Right out the door. That's my seat. That's my And commissioners, before we uh, depart, as we're wrapping up here, April's, of course, month of the young child. As you all know, uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And so we just wanted to give you um, an updated invitation to what will be a Mental Health State of the Child Summit that we're having at Chesapeake College on the 24th of May. Uh, Dr. Salins will be the keynote speaker, and we have a lot of really exciting things planned. So I have enough copies. What time on the 24th? It's, uh, excuse me, uh, noon to 4 p.m. Um, and just a quick overview, Dr. Salins is the keynote, as I said. We have a panel discussion with folks like Gary Hoffman, um, uh, the lady that runs For All Seasons, you name it, I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, it's a really good panel. 
and uh, talking about what has happened over the course of the last five years with the pandemic and looking at a lot of indicators and then doing a needs assessment at the end. Um, and we've already actually raised some funding for solutions we haven't even identified yet. That's how much the business community and some of our civic organizations are behind us. So uh, all that information's in the letter and I'll hand that to Margie. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Todd. All right, Commissioners, we are a little ahead of schedule. Next, we have our tax set-off hearing with our um, incorporated town representatives. I see a few of them here. I don't know if they're all here yet. We can um, we can do some action items first and wait till 6.15. Yeah. Want to do that? Chris, you want yep. action okay. items? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go ahead. All right. Sounds low weight. All right, in that case, uh, let's turn to tab number three. Page one, we have Proclamation 22-19. Steve, you have that open in front of you? What'd you say? You want to do 20 here? There you go. Yes, sir. Tell me when. Door. Anytime. Close it. All right, this proclamation 22-19, whereas Queen Anne's County <clears throat> future quality of life depends on the safe and healthy development of children residing in communities across our county, and whereas Queen Anne's County seeks to raise awareness of child abuse prevention and support for children who have suffered abuse, and whereas Queen Anne's County Child Abuse Response and Evaluation Care Center reports that more than 45 of the youngest and most vulnerable citizens seek support each year for abuse through our Child Advocacy Center, and whereas effective child abuse prevention and support efforts to child victims and families succeed because of partnerships created amongst lo local law enforcement, human service agencies, legal experts, health care providers, mental health experts, and other agencies dedicated to improving the lives of children. And whereas Maryland has adopted laws to, to protect child victims' rights and provide essential services, our public and private sectors must continue to work cooperatively to maintain and improve programs and legislation that will maintain the youngest and most vulnerable victims. And whereas Queen Anne's County calls on all citizens, community agencies, medical and mental health providers, elected officials, schools and businesses to increase their collaboration with care center in support of child victims of maltreatment and to prevent child abuse and strengthen the community in which we live. Now, therefore, we, the County Commissioners of Queen Anne's County, do hereby proclaim April as Child Abuse Prevention Month in Queen Anne's County, Maryland. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wilson. Very well done. All right, moving on, uh, commissioners, we have uh, item number two on pages two and three. We have the FY 2023 revised uh, budget adoption calendar, and this is for your consideration and approval. Under this schedule, the commissioner's proposed budget will be released on May the 4th, and public hearings will be scheduled on May 23rd, 24th, and 25th. I move to approve the FY 2023 revised budget calendar. Second. Motion is second. All those in any discussion, first of all? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? By zero, motion carries. Okay, thank you, commissioners. Item three on pages four through six is uh, a capital equipment purchase for a Kubota Ventrac tractor. Uh, this is from the um, uh, Department of Parks and Recreation, and this is for a, um, a replacement Kubota Ventra tracker from Turf Equipment and Supply for $44,135.20 under the Sourcewell pre-established government contract, replacing a 20-year-old unit. I move to authorize the Department of Parks and Recreation to purchase a Kubota Ventrac tractor from Turf Equipment and Supply Company in Jessup, Maryland for $44,135.20 
funding to come from the Department of Parks and Recreation's capital equipment budget. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? By zero, motion carries. All right, thank you, Commissioners. Item number four on pages seven through nine is the Route 18 and Sudlersville Trail Repair. And this is a contract uh, proposed to award to Bravo Equipment and Construction Company to repair the trails at Route 18 and Sudlersville Park for $27,000, $27,500 under the Anne Arundel County contract, um, pre-established contract. I move to authorize the Department of Parks and Recreation to contract with Bravo Equipment and Construction Company Incorporated to repair the trails on Route 18 in Southersville Parks for $27,500. Second. We've got a motion and a double second from the Commissioners Wilson. So, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 5 0. Motion carries. Okay, thank you, Commissioners. Item 5 on pages 10 through 12 is the Fallen Heroes parking lot <laughs> paving <laughs> contract. This is a second contract to Bravo Equipment to pave and stripe the Fallen Heroes Memorial Park lot for $13,850 under that same Anne Arundel County contract. I move to authorize the Department of Parks and Recreation to contract the Bravo Equipment and Construction Company Incorporated to pave and stripe the Fallen Heroes Memorial Parking Lot for $13,850 and it definitely needs it. Second. Got a motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 5-0. The motion carries. Thank you, Commissioners. Item 6 on pages 13 through 29 is a rural legacy agreement of sale and project agreement for Bernard and William B. Davis. It's for a 67.575 acre property uh, owned by Mr. Williams and Mr. Davis, which is ready to be submitted for the uh, Department of Natural Resources for final funding approval for a rural, rural legacy grant in the Foreman's Branch rural legacy area. I move to approve the Royal Legacy Agreement of Sale and Project Agreement for the Bernard A. and William B. Davis property. Second. We got a motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you, Commissioners. Item number seven on pages 30 and 30 through 32 is um, a recommendation from the EDIF for the approval of a conditional loan of $50,000 to Eastern Shore Urgent Care for the development of a new urgent care practice located at 7416 Church Hill Road, which is just on this side of the bridge into Chestertown. The funds will be used to purchase radiology equipment and related furniture, and the business is expected to employ six full-time professionals when fully staffed, and the EDIF Commission has recommended that the award be conditioned upon the creation of four additional new full-time positions. I move to approve the disbursement of up to $50,000 from the EDIF Fund to Eastern Shore Urgent Care LLC for the purchase of radiology equipment for the new urgent care practice in northern Queen Anne's County. Disbursement of funds is a contingent upon a sign agreement between the EDIF Commission and the Eastern Shore Urgent Care LLC and outlines conditions of the agreement, performs the subject project in accordance with the application submitted to the EDIF Commission. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? Long uh, overdue yeah, and discussion. much needed. <laughs> Long overdue and much needed. I think. Heather, can you come up and give us a little outlook on what this means? So we've actually been out to meet the owners of this uh, entity. It's, it is North County right there at the bridge. Um, she is a, the owner operator, her name is Lauren uh, Brunello and she is a nurse practitioner, currently um, a candidate for her doctorate in nursing. Uh, but their hope is to be able, they're not corporate in any way. It's uh, uh, the wife and the, the husband, they bought the, it's a current doctor's office, they bought it rehabbing it. Uh, they're using their own funding other than for the purchase of the property um, and this loan they're going to do the best that they can to get open um, June July but I think it's going to be a great uh, service for our North County residents it will also serve our um, Kent County as well I also connected them with the University of Maryland medical system and the urgent uh, the emergency room in Kent County and I believe that they've already met so that they know what each other's doing and looking for ways to work together 
So I want to compliment you because it, with the tremendous shortage of uh, primary care guys, having an urgency come in is fabulous. So well done on that. Thank you. And an existing medical facility it was a dentist's office, I believe. Yeah. yeah so. No, it's a great location, too. It really is, right there at the bridge. Well, it unloads a lot of weight off the ERs, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. All right. Any other Thank you. discussion? Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Didn't think so. Motion carries. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Heather. <clears throat> okay. We're right about at 615. Do you want to yeah. go into the yeah. tax? One more in, I think, real quick. One more? Sure. Item number eight on page 33 is uh, the summer SNAP program, which is the supplemental nutritional assistance program grant and funding request from the Department of Social Services. They're requesting an additional $29,038 to fully fund the summer SNAP program, which provides uh, families with children between the ages of five and 18 an additional $100 per child in benefits during the summer months when school is out. And uh, they're gonna apply for $106,200 they have some matching funds through um, uh, Department of um, Aging, my clerk's group, and they're looking for an additional $29,038 to make their 49% match. I move to approve the funding in the amount of $29,038 for the summer SNAP program. Second. So, Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Aye. Aye. Zero. Motion carries, and we can go to the tax differential. Okay. Next, we'll have the tax set-off hearing, and we this is when we annually ask our representatives from our municipalities to come and make a presentation to us or uh, about their services, and uh, we will go through these in alphabetical order. First, we have the town of Barclay, and I think uh, Virginia Albers is here representing the town of Barclay. Okay. Hello. If, they, if they have no changes from when we did it at the Cog, do they... Do you, do they have to speak during the hearing? Or, I mean, is it up to the, it's, the it's town? It's right? really up to the town if they I don't want to make a presentation. I really don't want to add. I think okay. both of you were there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Town of Centerville? No changes. No changes? All right. Town of Churchill? Charles? Mr. Rhodes? Sir Charles? Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, town of Millington. Anybody here from Millington this evening? Okay. Town of Queen Anne. Bill Starkey. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Am, yeah. I, am I correct in that? Mr. Mayor, Mayor Starkey. Yeah. Congratulations. I'm not really sure. Marty didn't fill me in. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, kind of got third on me last Friday, so I didn't have much. Um, as far as I know, Marty said everything was good. I guess uh, he was the mayor before and he met with you guys. Um, I want to do thank you guys for all your support um, financially, uh, physically. I mean, the Parks Department has been really great to us, and uh, they're helping us put in some grants. So Steve's done a great job with that. Awesome. Good. good. Very good. Other than that, everything in the little town of Queen Anne is going fine. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right, next we have uh, Queenstown. Ms. Pat Bowl and Aaron Horning. Aaron yeah. Yeah. Aaron Horning. Yeah, come on up. Good evening, Good gentlemen. Evening. Good Normally evening. I'm catty chatty, but I want to thank you for your support of the town of Queenstown. I have no um, amendments to my request, except I would like to see, see if there is any possibility for some funding for the fireworks display that gets done um, in the last week of the summer. It's the Labor Day weekend. It's the weekend after Labor Day. And we normally do this so that we don't compete with the Narrows, or with the town of Centerville on the historic Memorial Day and Fourth of July meetings. We do do this, and it is funded uh, by the town. So if there was any other f source of funding for the fireworks, um, they're about $5,700 for 45 minutes. 
I don't think I would put this in my offset request, but I'm asking. Jim, Jim likes to blow stuff up. Jim oh, yeah. He's on favor of this. Why not? <laughs> See the mail? Finally, we get to blow something up. <laughs> oh, no. I wish they would do it on the 4th of July, because that's my birthday, and I would really enjoy fireworks. Ah, but, well, then you'd yeah. be working on your birthday. You're better off doing something. I know. I'd be it, better so. off than Labor Day. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That to, would be my only request. I have to say, we have liaisons to everything, and the liaison to fireworks is... Oh, the liaison <laughs> Is that the firecracker is commissioner? I don't know. I guess, you know. <laughs> okay, well. Wherever I go, things blow up, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Sparkle. One way or another. One way or another. Well, they blow up in everywhere, so. All of it. Really? Yeah. Okay. You want to go all of it? Yes, yeah, let's do it. Okay. I'll make a motion that we cover the cost of your fireworks. You said in the, in the amount of 5800 I think it's $5,800. $5,800. Right. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank opposed? you very much. You're quite welcome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good next, thing, we have uh, town of Sellersville. Because then everybody's going to want fireworks next, right? <laughs> You're good. It's coming. Sellersville right. is two good. Two for two. You don't want fireworks? Jim's in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> we got there already, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> they already got there. They already talked to Jim. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last but not least, we have the town of Templeville. Anybody here from Templeville this evening? Okay. All right. Very good. That concludes our tax set-off hearing. All right. For this Quickest, right. successful. Since it's been in its inception, that's the fastest one. You're doing a great job, commissioners. Yeah. You all are. But good. the cog meeting was. Yeah. Took the time to cog meeting. So right. I said this. Well, we put the automatic. Yeah. No. Yeah. But, but good. We the cog meeting was long. Everybody got the speakers. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Yeah. Good. And El Presidente took care of it. Charlie took care of everything, and that's why he's Sir Charles. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, commissioners, next on our scheduled agenda uh, this evening is the public hearing for the comprehensive plan and the Kenton Harris Community Plan, and we must start that at 630. 630. Right. So if you'd like, we action can continue items. with the action yeah. items. Yep, yep. All right. All right, so going back to tab number three, we are at item number nine. This is actually an informational item. This is the... 2022 citizen sponsored text amendment applications. Uh, we receive these text amendment applications annually during the first week of February each year. We received one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Um, one from the Ken Island Yacht Club, one from Mr. Barry Waterman for Woodlands and Resource Protection Standards, one from uh, Lisa Schrader, uses allowed in open space, major extractions. One from uh, Janet Dean and William Parker for utility scale solar arrays, and one for uh, Jamal's at the Kenton Arrows, um, care of Joe Stevens for the Waterfront Village Center. So these five amendments uh, would be conveyed to the Planning Commission for their consideration and recommendation that would come back uh, to the commissioners, as, which we are then obligated to schedule a public hearing to um, consider those text amendments. Um, Amy Mordock is here if you have any questions about any of these. I mean, yeah, uh, got a little Stephanie, time you, you want to come up and Stephanie, just give a you know, okay. quick Stephanie. briefing on each one of these so the public can understand what this process is and what uh, these individuals are trying to accomplish. All right, so for each of them, obviously, like Todd said, they're citizen sponsored text amendments. Which happen once a year? Yep, the first, the first week of 10 business days in February. Um, so with that, we received five. Um, the first is to allow um, limited overnight recreational parking in uh, bona fide um, fraternal organizations within the WVC, so that's only strictly within the WVC. Um, the second is from Barry Waterman, and that one's to remo remove our woodlands protection, resource protection standard. Um, and that was just a blanket across, straight across the county. It would well, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to have to ask a question on that one. It, the the woodlands resource protection standards were the county standards yes and those are the, separate from the critical area and the forest conservation act and are they more stringent than the states yes so that's the purpose of this is mm -hmm. he's just trying yep. to say you know what don't supersede the state and, yep okay just so there would still be protection there but right. at the state level right, right. Yep. gotcha um the one uh from lisa schrader is to allow major extractions in the open space um, where you have a tdr um the following one is for utility scale solar arrays. Um, this is to allow, so for a parcel, um, at this point in time, you're not allowed to 
include a parcel within that overall site area that um, is going to be included in through an administrative subdivision so you can't add, add acreage basically to that parcel. Um, with this is to allow a property that already has an existing subdivision on it to basically um, remove that subdivision that was previously and include that acreage into your site of your solar array. So they want to be able to increase the area where they want to put a solar array um, is the intent. And the last one um, from Jamal's, this is spe specific to the WVC. And this and is the WVC to a, for people who are watching means? Waterfront Village Center, yep. Um, it's to increase the um, dwelling, the density units allowed for uh, dwellings uh, basically within a redevelopment. Uh, so it increases the maximum mixed use residential density to 25 dwellings per unit. So um, that will allow them, but they have to comply with the existing bonus density standards that are found in the code. So, so the process you know, comes to us now to, to basically say it goes to the Planning Commission? Yep. And the Planning Commission on average for these five would take how long to is it the hopes is to send them all at the same through the same meeting right um, so all five of them um, their next meeting will be till May mm -hmm. um, and then we would follow back up with you after they make their recommendations and then it comes May. back to us with the recommendations and then yep. we we'll schedule a public hearing and make a vote okay yep Good. all right thank, thank you. you Yep. all right thank you Stephanie Okay, we still have a few minutes to go. So uh, item number 10 on page 51 is budget amendment CC32. This is for school impact fees. And this amendment increases the transfer from the school impact fee funds to the general fund, uh, which transfers just over a million dollars uh, so that we can make debt service payments on the Mattapique school complex. Motion to approve CC32. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? I think just like, you know, just so the public understands this, you know, the, the county, has impact fees anytime you go to build anything there's an impact fee for your schools your parks uh you know your, your fire departments and what this is is we that, that money's built up in the county's coffers and we used to do it i don't know seven eight years ago now somehow we got off track where we would use that impact fee to pay debt on existing uh, school Expansions. additions and or newly built schools so that's all this is doing is moving it from that one category and paying a bill basically that mm -hmm. we sh we're going to be doing this every year. So mm -hmm. it's a good thing. Catch Thank it you. That's right. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 5-0 motion carries. All right. Thank you, commissioners. Item 11 on uh, page 52 is budget amendment CC33. CC and this is for the distribution of fire impact fees to the county uh, volunteer fire companies. Motion to approve CC 33. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? 5 0. Motion carries. The second was from, I think, Stevie beat you to it. I don't know who. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, commissioners. Item number 12 on pages 53 through 98 is actually two items. We have the designation letter. Uh, and the bond resolution for uh, 2203. The letter is to designate myself as the appointed um, official to conduct a sale and accept electronic bids for the county's public facilities and refunding bonds for 2022. That is for Commissioner Corcorino's signature. And the second piece is resolution 2203, which authorizes the issuance and sale of two series of general obligation bonds and the maximum aggregate principal not to exceed 22400000 the new money portion thereof not to exceed $7.8 million. I move to execute the correspondence from Ken and Shelton and LRP and to adopt bond resolution 22-03. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 5-0, that motion carries. All right, thank you, Commissioners. We have, excuse me. Mm -hmm. hear from Moody's. We, 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 we do plan to hear from uh, Moody's on our rating uh, sometime tomorrow, Wednesday. It was delayed from Friday, which is, we think, a good sign. We have a bet. So we, are, we have two AAA ratings, from one from S&P and one from Fitch, and Moody's has never given us a AAA rating yet, and we uh, anticipate getting um, that news sometime tomorrow. We'll certainly let the board know and that, what that basically covers comes. what our 
our rate is on our bonds, but I mean, for anybody here who doesn't know it, Queen Anne's County has the highest rating of any county on the Eastern Shore. Is that correct, Mr. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's correct. And higher than most of the Western Shore, too. There you go. Which means we get lower rates, which saves the taxpayers money. Yep. Absolutely. Very good. All right, uh, we have two desk items. Desk item number one is a support letter um, to the uh, folks down at the uh, community of um, in North, adjacent to North West Creek on Kent Island, and they are seeking a technical assistance grant from DNR for uh, continued study on their water, the waterway down there in their community. I move to execute the support letter for the. MFWF small water shed grant letter for the Alliance for the restoration of Northwest Creek's application for the 2022 SWG planning and technical assistance grants program. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 5-0 motion carries. Thank you commissioners and the last desk item desk item number two. Um, this is actually a response letter that was drafted in response to um, an informational letter under tab four uh, regarding uh, additional lights at the White Marsh Park for the baseball fields. Uh, it was addressed to Mr. Jack Mowat. He is uh, the Commissioner Emeritus from the USA Softball Group. I move to execute the letter to the USA Softball regarding the lights at White Marsh Park softball field. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye zero. Motion carries. All right, Commissioners. Thank action. you very much. It is uh, exactly 630. 630. 630. Exactly. So if we could have Mr. Thompson come up. Um, so this is the uh, public hearing for the comprehensive plan and the Kenton Ayers community plan. Mr. Patrick Thompson, County Attorney, will be um, officiating the hearing. He will read the public notice, and then we have staff that will be coming up with the consultant to provide an overview of the uh, information and comments collected so far. We can then consider additional public testimony this evening, and then um, we need to either adopt the plan or adopt resolution to extend the period by which we have to adopt the plan by 60 days because we had that little glitch in the advertising process um, which was of no fault of ours we had a glitch with the uh, newspaper missing one of the weeks uh, for the uh, prescribed public notice so mr. Thompson All right. um, this is a public hearing being held by the County Commissioner of Queen Anne's County of the 2022 Queen Anne's County Comprehensive Plan and the Kenton Ayers Community Plan as recommended by the Queen Anne's County Planning Commission. The overall review of the final draft will include consideration of the comprehensive rezoning request and growth area. This, this hearing is being held Tuesday, April 12, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. in the County Commission's Hearing Room, Liberty Building 107 North Liberty Street, Central Maryland. The purpose of the hearing is to provide an opportunity for all interested persons to be heard on the proposed 2022 Queen Anne's County Comprehensive Plan and Kenton Ayers Community Plan before a final vote by the County Commissioners. The final draft uh, County Comprehensive Plan and Kenton Ayers Community Plan have been available at www.qacplan2021.com the County Commissioner's Office during normal business hours and the Kent Island Central Branch li Library during their hours of operation. Speakers will be limited to three minutes each. Written testimony of any length may be submitted to the County Commissioner by a planned QAC comment portal or by delivery to 110 Vincent Street, Central Maryland. Written testimony may be provided at the hearing. All hearing sites are accessible to individuals with disabilities, sign language interpreters, and assistive listening systems are available. For the record of this proceeding will be a certificate of publication indicating that notice of tonight's hearing was published for three successive weeks in the Bay Times and Record Observer newspapers of general circulation in Queen Anne's County. Uh, first person who signed up to speak is Wick Dudley. 
Oh, before we do that, we were going to have, um, I think staff was going to make a brief oh, presentation. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Excuse me. Amy? Or? So, uh, Lauren, go to Wallace Montgomery, and I want to give you a very brief overview of uh, where we are and how we got here. And Margie, you can keep me to three minutes if you want to start the clock, because we don't want to take up any time that the public should have to give their comments. So what you uh, have before you this evening uh, started out as the 2021 Comprehensive Plan, and now we're the 2022 Comprehensive Plan. So it's been a long time coming. And so you have before you uh, two drafts that have been um, thoroughly vetted through community participation. We've had really good uh, community participation, thanks to Wallace Montgomery and all of their efforts working through the pandemic to even get uh, really great online communication as well, and then having in-person meetings. So we feel good uh, that the public uh, has been heard and that we're doing our best to uh, accommodate all of the input that we've received, and the Planning Commission had, has agreed and put forward the plan before you. So this is the final draft, and we're at the final comment period for this planning exercise. So the written comments that you have received since the plan was conveyed to you were in your packet. Uh, there were a few letters that were received since this packet had to go out and be published for the community. Uh, so we will update you on those comments. And what you are to consider tonight are additional comments that are being made by the public. And then that should officially close the record so that you may then contemplate all of the input received, all of the recommendations made, and give staff direction on how we should proceed. There are two other aspects of this planning exercise that are in front of you tonight and we're putting on the record. And that is the comprehensive rezoning request that had been submitted for review, which is a part of the comprehensive planning exercise relative to several maps in the plan that establish overarching land use categories and establish our growth areas. To have approval of these comprehensive rezoning requests is a first step because the comprehensive plan has to guide our zoning. So later, uh, the comprehensive zoning requests will be will follow up uh, through consistency with the comp plan. That doesn't happen now. That happens at a later date. In addition, uh, you have before you a an idea to contemplate the existing growth areas. So those are the three top items that are in front of you right now at the end of this process and for public comment this evening. It, uh, as so many things during this exercise, everything took a little bit longer, so we are now up against the 90-day period. This board is required to adopt um, or take some action on the comprehensive plan 90 days after the plan is conveyed to you by the Planning Commission. If no action is taken, uh, the draft that has been forwarded by the Planning Commission becomes the official comprehensive plan. Uh, but you do have a one-time 60-day extension for extenu extenuating circumstances, and we recommend that you adopt tonight the resolution to extend that period to give you time to contemplate all of the comments heard this evening and to give staff direction. So that's the only real action that is before you this evening, is to give yourselves that uh, 60, one-time 60-day extension to uh, contemplate and give <coughs> All of us direction. So we would close the record and then do the extension if we were going to do the extension, right? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Is that three minutes, Marky? All right. Okay. Thanks, Amy. Thanks. Thanks, Lauren. All right. You can have a microphone up here. Yeah. George, can, George, George, can we bring the mic? <clears throat> uh, first person who signed up is Wick Dudley. Good afternoon, Commissioners, and uh, thank you for having us here. Wick Dudley on behalf of the Bay Area Association of Realtors, and I'm just here to, number one, thank Amy Mordock and the consultants who've done an excellent job. Whenever we've had questions, um, they've been very responsive. Um, I was one of the ones who provided a couple additional written comments yesterday morning ahead of this meeting. 
Um, so I'm just here to bring attention to those matters. They both deal with the sewer capacity issue, which is found in Chapter 4 of the plan. Um, essentially, as we know, the sewer capacity is reaching its limit for the unincorporated parts of the county, especially in the Kent, Kent Island and the Grayson Mill area. Um, so it's Barr's position that the county really needs to seek a full court press, whether it's legal, political, regulatory relief, seeking solutions to this issue, because once that capacity is reached, it's really going to hurt this county moving forward. Um, I propose that an ad hoc committee be created or, or the planning commission or even this body um, take it upon themselves and create a uh, basically bi-monthly or monthly reports to apprise the public of this issue and any solutions that uh, the county is working towards. Um, <clears throat> Relatedly, there is language in the plan that uh, suggests that the remaining sewer capacity for this plant be uh, limited only to commercial uses. I don't think it's appropriate for the plan to hamstring the county for what type of development should be brought forth. Now, of course, if a commercial developer comes forward, they can go through the planning department and the planning process uh, and get that sewer allocation. Um, but it's not proper, in my opinion, or Barr's opinion, to limit what sort of development will be moving forward through the next decade. And furthermore, it's not uh, consistent with what we're seeing on the ground. There is a huge shortage of housing stock in this country and this county. It's making housing unaffordable for most, most people, and especially first-time home buyers. In contrast with the, if you want to call it the post-pandemic economy or the new age economy, there's really not much need or demand for additional commercial space. So uh, for those reasons, it's inappropriate to limit the remaining sewer capacity for commercial use. Um, and it's a really simple solution on that point. It's just to strike that language from the plan. It's a, it's a few sentences, and I think one of the recommendations, um, fairly simple. But beyond that, I, I've been very pleased with this process, and I appreciate your time. Um, and I indeed look forward, to, look forward to reading the finished product. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Tracy Schultz. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Tracy Schultz. I live in Chester, Maryland. I submit a request identified by the Planning Department as CRR02 to have the designation of my property, map 57, parcel 68, also located in Chester, to be changed and added into the growth area. The Planning Commission agreed with my request and voted to have it included, so that is why I'm here today. There has been talk about whether to add new properties into the growth area because of the limited amount of available sewer. Along with this, there has been some consideration about removing some properties already in the growth area from the existing plan because of sewer issues. You received an opinion from an attorney about adding additional properties into the growth area. As you know, this is their opinion. If I have, <coughs> if I paid an attorney, hold this against me, Pat, but to give me an opinion, I'm sure that I would uh, have a different opinion than what you received. So. I don't agree that the comprehensive plan is the right place to regulate the zoning of properties on the basis of available sewer. The comprehensive plan should be the map of where you want planned future development to occur if or when there is sufficient capacity to allow it to happen and not be used to regulate zoning based on sewer capacity. The adequate public facilities ordinance is a document that should be used for this as it was designed to control whether there is adequate sewer and infrastructure capacity to allow a development to move forward. If a property is not included in this comprehensive plan update, it will be another 10 years, actually been longer than 10 years because of circumstance over the last couple of years, but another 10 years before a request would be allowed to be submitted, which would be at the next plan update. That is a long time to have to wait for being denied just because of today's available sewer capacity, when there could be changes in the way that the sewer plan capacity is graded. New treatment techniques could also become available in the next few years to help change the sewer plan's capacity, and there would not be a way to open up the comprehensive plan, which would make anyone with a request that was denied because of sewer capacity wait 10 years. I'm asking that you please keep my request for my property as it now stands to be included in the final version of the growth area approved plan when it comes up before you for your vote, just like the Planning Commission did. They thought it was the right thing to do. Thanks for your time and consideration, and have a good Easter. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I'm just here for the Kent Narrows Development Foundation just to bring to your attention uh, that uh, the foundation did consider 
the review of the community plan. Number one, we want to thank Wallace and Montgomery and the planning department and the county commissioners, as well as the GIS department for working with us through a, a very uh, labor-intensive process. So I uh, want to go on record saying that uh, we did, the board did submit a letter on March 22nd, 2022, which you have in your possession. And the board did vote to uh, endorse the, the plan with a series of adjustments, some technical adjustments <coughs> and uh, some others that you will be able to review. In summary, we would support the 60-day extension to allow for some time to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Victoria Hoffman. Hi, I'm Victoria Hoffman with Kent Narrows Development Foundation. Gigi covered some of um, the high notes. I, I want to thank everybody in the planning department. It was a lot of work, a lot of work, and a lot of coordination and uh, cooperation between all the departments. Everybody did a great job. It is a big undertaking. As Gigi mentioned, we sent you a letter dated March 2nd, 22nd. That was the letter the board voted on, subject with some changes listed in it. Um, we know yesterday when the documents were posted, we found that all of the comments that we made, the technical portion, were included in the spreadsheet you got yesterday, so you'll have some duplication between our letter and that worksheet. Um, we took the time today to just apply to a sort of overlay some of our statements onto that worksheet, which we can provide to you if that's helpful as you're reviewing it, because then we don't have to continue to cross-reference documents to see if one's here or there. I'd be happy to give that to you if you like. Uh, we would just refer you back to our letter for some further um, statements by the board or any, any co further context that might be missing from the worksheet that would be helpful if you read the letter. A little, it provides you maybe a little more detail in some of those areas. So if you'd like that, um, we could provide that to you tonight. Yeah. Yeah, the record's open. Yeah. If you want to submit, we yeah. just give it in. We it's may the have. same thing you received, just we have sort of written our comments on it. So as you're reviewing it, you don't have to be looking back and forth between documents. Where's this guy? Margie. Margie. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for your experience. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's everyone I have signed up. Is there anyone else with any public comment? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Amy's getting it. Even more homework. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. What do we have here? Oh, Scott McClashin, um, uh, P.O. Box 39, Churchill, Maryland, uh, owner, co-owner of Parson Bean Farm. Oh, good evening, uh, commissioners and Todd and Madam Clerk. How are you this evening? Oh, what I've just handed out to you, uh, Mr. Howard Dean and I and others have been working and looking at the comp plan. We want to thank Amy Mordock and her staff and the uh, consultants for working on the comp plan. It's a very important document. But um, as you all know, I think you all know, our thought or our uh, thought is and emphasis in the preservation of agriculture. In that, in what I just handed you, you'll find over about 140 signatures, not only of production agriculture people, but a lot of citizens that moved to Queen Anne's County. Why? because they liked what they saw. Agriculture, as you well know, is the largest money generator in Queen Anne's County. Ironically, it's the largest in the state of Maryland. We want to preserve that. It's, it's just that simple. But that's a vision statement that you will see there that farmers and other citizens have looked at. Um, we, we know you're looking at it. The other thing I might mention here, too, is in the Delmar Reformer, you may have seen the act uh, the Eck family, uh, Mark Eck and his family were named the uh, Farm Family of the Year at the Ag Dinner. Mm -hmm. I also had the great pleasure of joining my wife and her brother, Bill Mason, and we went before Governor Hogan a couple of weeks ago. You may have seen the paper, and they were named as a century farm. Now, there are other century farms in the county, but that, that, that bodes to, well, I think, for what we are in Queen Anne's County. We need to preserve that. And so, so I'll give you a copy of this paper. I see I have some time left. I'm going to diverge a little bit here. 
Uh, something that I think needs to be addressed on, we hope you pay attention to it. Solar, I know we want clean energy. Solar seems to be the in vogue thing now. But as I understand it, and I may be wrong, correct me, but if a solar farm goes on a production agriculture farmland, the, the emphasis is that if for some reason it ceases to become a solar farm, it is returned to agriculture. What I've seen north of Churchill, if, that's, if that statement is true, it's a cruel hoax for that ordinance. Uh, I, all I say is go and take a look. Maybe it will be. I and others don't think so. I understand, and I may be wrong, I think, I don't know who uh, monitors this, but somebody from planning and zoning went up there, and uh, I think Vivian went up. With all due respect, Vivian's very talented, but she doesn't know a thing about farming and what can be returned to agriculture. So uh, that, got 19 seconds left, Todd. So that, that j just please be aware of that. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Let's give it to Margie. Yeah, thank you. Um, Jay Paul said, Good evening, Commissioners. Jay Falstead, Queen Anne's Conservation Association. Um, I just want to make a couple of quick comments. First, I would also like to um, compliment the staff uh, on this comp plan. Um, this was a two-year period during a pandemic, and um, staff did a remarkable job. Uh, I, this is the third comprehensive plan that I've worked on, or that I followed, rather. And um, they're always difficult. Nobody's ever happy. Um, but in this circumstance, I think staff did uh, probably the, the best job that I've ever seen on any comprehensive plan. So I wanted to at least acknowledge that. The other thing that I wanted to bring forward to you just as a means of putting it on the comprehensive plan record is that since the last planning commission meeting, the latest IPP, IPCC report, the um, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report came out on April 2nd. Um, it's a voluminous document. I don't expect everybody to read it, but in there, there is a, a summary for policymakers, and that's you guys. And I urge all of you to try and, and read it. Um, the website is www.ipcc.ch. Um, don't read the whole thing. Just read the last page or read the executive summary. But as we talk about the comprehensive plan, there are key elements within that document that need to be considered as you ultimately move towards adoption. So um, with that, thank you for the time, and uh, I appreciate your service to the county. Thank you. Jack Broderick. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm uh, Jack Broderick of Chester. I'm going to add my very positive comments and thank yous to uh, Amy Mordock and her planning staff and to the, uh, the tremendous contractor team that Amy had working. Um, this was, as, as was mentioned, difficult time. Uh, but these guys reached out creatively uh, during COVID, uh, you know, virtually and in person sought input, particularly in the area of uh, heritage partners. And I think we really appreciated that. They asked, they listened, and we shared concerns and comments. And that was not only in the heritage area, but very much across the board. So I want to say publicly, thank you. Couple other comments. Um, you know, this was, uh, promised to be an update, not a rewrite. It was an update. And I think it's a better update than the plan we had 10 years ago. Like Scotty said, ain't perfect. But it's, it's a better step forward for Queen Anne's County. The vision is written a little differently, but I think very creatively. And again, carries the county forward very, very positively. Community plan, some of us were concerned on the island that by pulling the Chester Stevensville plan into the, uh, the overall plan, that somehow it might be weakened, but I really don't think it is. Uh, growth in that area, long-term planning is a challenge every day. And I think 
it can carry forward just as well as part of the major plan. Emphasis being on quality of life and community character, and that's critical. On the Bay Bridge part or transportation, some of us in here <laughs> sit with the state on the advisory board. <laughs> Tracy, Jim, uh, Steve, and myself. And uh, <coughs> I, there's there's a lot of questions, no easy answers. But I think the way it's covered in this plan is probably as good as it can be covered for Queen Anne's County. And again, I want to say, well done, thank you. It's it's a challenge for the future, and we need to really work together on it. From the uh, from the heritage standpoint. Again, I, I couldn't be more thankful for how our professionals reached out, sought our input, and I really do think some of the things added to the plan will help to strengthen uh, our protection and our encouragement uh, of the great heritage we have. And on that note, I want to invite all of you to come down to Kent Island Day on May 21st, Saturday, to help celebrate that heritage that this plan will help to protect. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I think that's everybody that signed up. Is, is there anyone, is there any further public comment with respect to the right. way? Come on up. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Josh Willis, Stevensville. Um, so you guys have been burdened and brought down by previous commissioners decisions, especially bad decisions, one pertaining to Four Seasons on Kent Island. I think a lot of people blame you guys for most of that stuff, and it just wasn't you. So with this new comp plan, I think maybe it's an opportunity to set the record straight and do things a little different. And I don't think it's any surprise to anyone that the majority of development in the county takes place on Kent Island. It's the bedroom community for Baltimore and D.C., and everybody wants to move over here. But there's a reason that everybody wants to move over here, and that stems back years and years and years ago. Essentially, it's a great place to live. It's open land. It's beautiful. Beaches. You can take walks around. There wasn't any traffic, or at least not until the second bridge was built and it really started booming. But there were ways to avoid that, and that would have been to put a restraint of sorts on irresponsible development. I'm not anti-development. Everybody says I am. I'm not. But when you're on an island surrounded by water, you have limited infrastructure. You guys are all well aware of that. Sometimes other people don't think that. The rest of this county is huge, and it has been well preserved as far as an agricultural gem. But Kent Island is slowly being destroyed and actually at a faster pace than it ever was currently. And regardless of sewer capacity, I don't think that's really what the uh, issue is at hand. It's a gem. It's a historical landmark. You know, we're one of the oldest settlements in the, all of America. And that's being overrun and, and, and just trampled over and paved over for some greedy developers to make another penny. I understand business. I've owned businesses myself. I'm all for having good quality of life, but that is slowly dwindling on Kent Island. And I think if you ask around enough, you'll hear that quite a bit. And I've had a say in this comp plan, and I do appreciate all the time that everybody's put in it. Oh, she's gone. She's over there. <laughs> Especially you. <laughs> um, and it's not an easy thing to do. I completely understand that. But the one thing I just want to remind everyone of is that you know as well as I do, your job is not to please developers and high-end real estate agents. It's to please the community and the residents that already live here. And sometimes you just have to put a cap on it. It's an island. You can't keep building on it and expect the quality of life to stay the same. And please take that into consideration with moving forward and understand that even if you do find out that there's another way to extend the sewer, that will still ruin more of well, the only thing that's left on Kent Island, very few farms. So I love this county. I love Kent Island. I would really appreciate it if you guys take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anybody, Anybody else? else? All right, so I think we can close the record. Yeah. Okay. Sure, please. And there was nobody online, right? Okay, 
it says, Dear Queen Anne's County Commissioners, I write to you today on behalf of the Eastern Shore Land Conservancy regarding the newest version of the 2022 Comprehensive Plan for Queen Anne's County. Eastern Shore Land Conservancy has been involved throughout this comprehensive planning process and several of our recommendations that we submitted in December 2021 have been incorporated into the version that you will be voting on in the near future. Our comments, including establishing new open spaces, advocating for larger funding, programs for land conservation, and discouraging development in environmentally sensitive areas. With an increased pressure for development moving east from the western shore and settling first in Queen Anne's County, the county will need to uphold, uphold strong zoning policies, conserve land, in per perpetuity and concentrate further growth in allocated growth areas in order to best maintain the rural heritage that the county prides itself on. We thank you for the opportunity to participate in this process and are grateful to county staff and Wallace Montgomery for their efforts. Eastern Shore Land Conservancy remains committed to preserving and sustaining the vibrant communities of the Eastern Shore of Maryland. And as such, we are happy to serve as a resource throughout this process and beyond. Please please reach out to Sarah Ramontnik as her email at any point. Thank you for your work on the 2022 Queen Anne's County Comprehensive Plan. And we're eager to see all that is in store for the county. Sincerely, Stephen K. Klein, I think it said. Yep. All right. And that's it, right? If that's all the public comment we have, I would, yeah, we could close the close public the record. record. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. And we do have a, a recommended motion if, um, if we're not going to adopt the plan, we would need to adopt that resolution to extend the deadline, so. All righty. In accordance with Maryland Land Use Code, <clears throat> 3-204, the county commissioners hereby extend the deadline to take action on the planning commission's recommended 2022 Queen Anne County Comprehensive Plan and Kent Narrows Community Plan and resolve to sign resolution 22-06. Second. Okay, we got a motion to second. Any discussion on that? I think it's uh... A good idea gives us time to take in all the it's a lot of information that we have received recently and i think it's only fair that we take the time to consider that so i think mm -hmm. that it makes sense from my perspective yeah all those in favor aye aye any opposed okay Pfizer motion carries it is extended 60 days 60 days all right thank you mr thompson all right thank you everybody who spoke yep, thank everybody yep and submitted comments All right, Commissioner, we have a few more items for uh, the Department of Public Works. I see Mr. Quimby back there. Take five minutes.
All right, Commissioners, we can reconvene now. We have a couple items here for the Department of Public Works. If you want to turn to tab number two, uh, item number one on pages one and two is the Stormwater Facilities Repair and Maintenance Bid. And Mr. Quimby he is here. He can review that. Or you want to make a motion first? Still motion. Okay, go ahead. I move to award the Stormwater Facilities Repair and Maintenance Contract to Martin's Excavation and Hauling LLC of Centerville, Maryland, in the amount of $143,300, and authorize the Director of Public Works to issue the notice of award and execute the contract on behalf of the County Commissioners. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? <laughs> nice. Take it away. All right, Commissioners. Um, these are four of the worst stormwater management ponds that the county owns and should have been maintaining for the last few decades. Um, we just didn't do it because we didn't have the resources for one thing, but as part of the MS4 permit, we are now regulatorily required to do so. And also as part of the MS4 permit, we're gonna be reaching out to private landowners who have these type of facilities and basically forcing them to maintain their ponds. So it'd be kind of remiss of us not to maintain our own ponds. These are, like I said, these are all on Kent Island. They're the worst of the ones we have and they have not been maintained in 30 years. So it's time to pay the piper, I guess. How do we go about with the, the private properties? Do we have like a, a party list of the ones that have been around longest? That have been hit first? Most of them have recorded maintenance and inspection agreements already. We've right. just never enforced it. But beyond that, I don't know. That they refuse to do it beyond that, uh, I'm not sure what that answer is. Right. And in, in theory, they should have been putting money aside, but they probably haven't. Like we didn't. Right. What happens to these ponds that make them, you know, you, you say they're in bad shape. They're in, what, what, what transpires that makes them go into bad shape? They might silt in so you don't have the volume you need. You get a lot of vegetation growing around them, which not so much on canal, but could impact the structure of the, if you had an embankment uh -huh. berm around it. Uh -huh. <clears throat> And a lot of times the outfalls f fail because they've had water going over them for 30 years and there's just various states of dis disrepair. When they silt in, does that stop percolation from taking effect or is that? To some degree, but their, their size holds a certain volume. Uh -huh. so, you know, a certain size storm is, goes into the pond, it's supposed to hold that volume and let it go at a slow rate. Uh -huh. So when you lose that volume, you lose the effectiveness of the pond. Uh -huh. Do you, you know, like the Conolingo Dam, do you right? the yeah. silt behind it. Right. Right. Much yeah. Yeah. Do you we actually have one of our own. Dredge them? A problem, child. From the, from the side. Yeah. I mean, excavator. Yeah. One excavator. Yeah. But I, I mean, one that I've dealt with specifically and been clean is Sullivansville at the senior center up there. That's been, what, twice now, Todd? That yeah, it's, I think so. Mm -hmm. And it silts in quickly. Really? Yeah. And then the outfall is, does, it does it's nothing. Clog, it clogs up, yeah. Nothing. On a yeah. pond, it's a puddle. Yeah. 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 But it's, it, it's a mosquito trap is what it becomes because the water don't go anywhere. It's amazing that much silt moves with very little uh, change in elevation. We, we actually, our community actually received a, a letter from the county regarding ours. An inspector came out, took a look at it, if you're concerned about, re regarding your question about the process. And and so we hired a contractor to, to come in and literally just um, dredge it. Um, and then the, the uh, connectivity of the pipes, cleaning the pipes, the fallouts, I mean, lifting the grates out and cleaning all that crap out and making sure that that is flowing. Um, and I know that we had to take vegetation uh, from the edge of the water up 14 feet clear. Uh, no trees, no shrubs, no bushes, no nothing. Um, a good 14 feet up around each one of our stormwater management ponds in our community. So it's a monumental task, it's costly. Um, yeah, so I, again, I hope some of these communities that will be getting that letter are prepared for it. So I could be now, looking at assessments. Design, so what is the design standards on the, the, the amount of uh, water that it has to capture? Is, so does it vary based on where you're at, say, in the county, or is it, is it pretty much, you know, standardized? At the state sets the standard. Okay. And uh, I, I think it's been a long time, thank God, since I've done stormwater management. <clears throat> but back in my day, you had to capture a two-year storm. Which back in those days was 3.3 .3 inches. I don't think that qualifies as a two year form yeah. anymore. Yeah, not anymore. Well, so, yeah, you would capture that. But the idea is whatever, so you have a, a, a meadow, right. and then you want to make it into a subdivision. So, whatever that meadow discharged on a two year storm, up to a two year storm before it got developed, that's what you size your pond to do. You have to capture that now. Capture that difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, moving forward with the MS4, I mean, I know I've heard talk about how we're going to accomplish that on the island, 
obviously there's not many places that you're going to go where there's existing uh, uh, development, things like that, that you can even put a catch pond, like the narrowest places. No, like this that. is all about maintaining what's already built but was not maintained. Right. Right, but oh. I mean, it's part of MS4, the permitting process. Now we're going to have to go put, we're going to have to go manage well, elsewhere, right? I mean, it, that depends on how we handle the 20% impervious area we have to address, which we staff believe that cheapest way, no question, is the cheapest way is to use nutrient credits from ski to address that. Otherwise, you would have to do what you're saying, and you would have to use private property, which I don't understand how that works. Unless you go out right, there and start, saying, you have to go up there and yeah, start condemning back, so parking, lots, parking, parking lots. lots. I just don't, right, that, right. I don't okay. understand how that works. So you're thinking ski will cover it then? They will, yes. Excellent. A portion of it, not all. We don't need, we don't need to use all. Uh, the ski will cover all of the restoration credits we need for MS4 and still have some left over. Perfect. Wow. Perfect. All right. Good move there, because that was a big money project yeah. right there. Huh? Yeah. All right. Well, since that's a lot of discussion, I'll reorient where we are. We have a motion to award the stormwater facilities repair and maintenance contract to Martin's Excavation Hauling LLC of Centerville, Maryland, in the amount of one hundred forty-three thousand three hundred dollars, and to authorize the director of public works to issue the notice of award and execute the contract on behalf of the county commissioners. That has been seconded. There's been discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Five zero. That motion carries. Thank you. I do like the name of the one contract. Though. And then a motion to uh, convene as a sanitary commission. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're sanitary. And there we go. Yep. All right. Item two. This is the ski phase three. Believe it or not, community mains construction bid results and recommendation of award. I move that we conditionally award the construction bid of the Southern Kent Island Phase Three Community Mains to Schumer Incorporated in, in the amount of $2,223,295, with the condition being the review and approval of the bid by the Maryland Department of Environment, and, and also I authorize the Director of Public Works to execute the agreement once any necessary submittals are in place. Second. Any discussion? We're not going to have any problems? <laughs> Uh, well, we do, Schumer did phase one yeah. community main as well as the transmission main as well as the postal road. So, no. But this is all directional? Mm -hmm. Very, 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 very little open? Or much nicer for the community and honestly it's not that much more expensive anymore. Okay. okay. All right. We got a motion from the second. We've had some discussion. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, five zero motion carries, and now I need a motion to go into roads. Yes, so I make a motion that we uh, convene as roads board. Second. Boom. A favor? So, yeah. Okay. We got here. So um, <laughs> this was a request from a, a private citizen to name a, a road that the county owns down by the golf course. It's the road that leads to the driving range to be named after a, a, a well-known character in our community. Um, so we um, requested to make a motion that we rename that road to Big Daddy Drive. And that road is where? Um, it's right off of Route 8. Leads driving range. Where, where, leads where to the driving range. Uh, oh, to, oh to softball. Yeah, yeah. Damn it, Phil, you're, you're the, whiffed on that. The driving range. There you go. Okay. That's it. I'll second, second. your motion. Oh. Yeah. All right. So Big Daddy was an institution in Queens County back in the day. And towed many people, including myself as a <coughs> reckless teenager, um, out of a lot of drainage ditches and uh, other places. So uh, I think this is, a, this is a great thing. I wasn't a reckless teenager, but I was in distress. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he actually it opened. Like, it seems like Big Daddy had been coming to the rescue for a lot of citizens here in Queens <coughs> County over yes. the years. And, and I think this was a small ask on the part of his daughter to celebrate his 80th birthday. Awesome. Fantastic. Let me just point out that he opened uh, Big Daddy's Texaco on Thompson Creek Road in 1978, and gasoline was 58 cents a gallon at that time. You didn't have to point that out. <laughs> <That's pretty good. laughs> that was it. And then right uh, next door was Shore Stop Pizza. Wow. Because well, I, I would have the 58 cents. Yep. 58 cents a gallon. Uh, wow. Great. Hard to believe. A motion a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. I'm take the bill, commissioners. And um, and the road uh, Give that division. So Roads division. <laughs> Put up. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. One, uh, one's got to be up. Bye. Whenever you want. 
sooner rather than later. Tomorrow's his birthday. <laughs> tomorrow's perfect. Yeah, tomorrow's perfect. Yeah, tomorrow's his perfect. Birthday. <laughs> I think his birthday's is Friday. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Send a picture to Phil, please. Mm -hmm. All right, commissioners, we have uh, one item under tab seven, a um, piece of legislation, and this is a, a bill for MS4, and this is for introduction. I'll introduce it. All right, thank you, Commissioner. I want to check what's in it first. I want to check what's in it first. All right. <laughs> Dude, he's quick to just introduce it. <laughs> I look dangerous. He'll never learn. He'll never learn. You're the Mylar Balloon. You're the Mylar balloon. balloon guy. All right. Uh, is that everything? That is everything. Round table. Round table. Who wants to go first? Anybody? I, I will. We're not going to do press and public comment, I'm assuming. I'll go first. Just. <laughs> That's um, we don't have any press and public comment, I think, right? Nothing. No one's online. There's nothing online. Yeah. No one's out there. We're good. All right. Um, so a couple things from the last time we actually convened as commissioners and not necessarily a budget committee board, but um, I had the opportunity to attend uh, while you guys were in a budget hearing, um, represent the commissioners at the Teachers Annual Awards Gala um, to award the Teacher of the Year. Um, it, uh, and then also other accomplishments that the teachers had achieved here in Queen Anne's County. I wanted to thank them very much for the invitation. I want to thank the fellow commissioners for allowing me to attend um, and miss the budget hearing. Um, and then the other thing is that uh, last Saturday, um, you know, obviously the weather hasn't been uh, cooperative uh, over the last uh, week, but uh, Saturday was the opening day for the Kent Island Youth Baseball and Softball organization here on the county. In the county, we, we did have the ceremony. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, all the games, but the T-ball games were canceled because of the field conditions. Um, and on that note, uh, as far as the field conditions, right up until the point of opening day, I want to uh, commend uh, Steve Chanley and our Parks and Recs Department and, um, and their great work in the tournament. Uh, that took place here, the icebreaker tournament last weekend. Uh, the staff did a great job in, in prepping those fields and getting them ready for the tournament. And we can't, the kids and the parents can't thank uh, a staff uh, enough for that. So if you'll pass that on to Steve, I'd appreciate it. Really well. Thank you, Commissioner. That's all I have. Mr. Wilson? Um, Back to follow. So let's see, things that we did. Oh, I got to actually Sunday, got to a week ago, got to do a uh, Eagle Scout. Uh, Logan Keeley, um, remarkable. Uh, did his Eagle Scout in three and a half years, four, just over four years in the in the Boy Scouts, which wow. is, wow. I mean, he had 51 merit badges, mm. wow. which typically, when the Eagle Scout they were saying is in between 21 or 21 are required, but anywhere from 21 to 28 is typical when they get their Eagle Scout. But how he long had does it take? How long does it take? normally to accomplish that. I mean, he did Most it. Most kids go in and when they're 13 or 12 or 13 and get out by the time they're 18. So, and he's only six, he's a freshman at Gunston. So he's uh, accomplished it pretty quickly. Wow. Yeah, phenomenal. Young man, he, uh, he actually did uh, a great project for Chester Y. He did every single one of their uh, buildings. He did a garden out in front uh, and let the, the citizens living in the different buildings design what they wanted out front. He went met with them all. They said what they wanted to see, if they wanted to see bird feeders. Or, so he designed each one for each specific building um, for the residents there to look outside and see the gardens. Awesome. Like I said, nine, nine buildings. He did nine of the buildings. So phenomenal project. Um, I guess based on tonight, uh, we've got some homework to do. Um, a lot of information, uh, credit to the staff uh, at, at Planning and Zoning for getting through this uh, process and now putting it on our on our plates. Um, I think the 60 days will be welcome because quite honestly, uh, I don't think in government we should take anything this large and just kind of uh, take a quick vote without vetting as much as we can um, before uh, we, we put this thing to bed and, and, and make it the, the comprehensive plan for the next 10 years. Um, we have a health care plan that I think was rushed through 10, 12 years ago, and we've seen some of the adverse effects of that. And it's just, you know, this is, this is, there's a lot of decisions to be made. We have some challenges, um, and the buck stops with us. Um, we've got some great recommendations, but ultimately, this is why we're up here. So, and that's all I got. Commissioner Moran? 
I, I, you know, I, the only thing I can think of in the last uh, two weeks, it's uh, was, was happy I went to. Some of these meetings get a little rough. Uh, was the uh, employee awards meeting? You know, the, the event we had at the Kramer Center, where our own county administrator racked up 30 years of uh, laughs and good times in the county, along with all the other uh, county employees. It's, it, it's it's one of those things that we get to do once a year that's truly enjoyable for all of us uh, to say thank you and, and you know pass out some some gifts and some uh, money. You know, for I mean, who would have thought that somebody would, would, in this day and age, would work for one job for 30, let alone 35, 40 years? And it, you know, I, I think that's that's extremely commendable for that kind of dedication. And, and uh, I just who else is going to hire him? Well, I know that. <laughs> believe me, yeah. But anyway, so I mean, I just I was I was happy to be involved in that and and look forward to it. And we went to another brag meeting on the Bay Bridge. Uh, had a couple presentations. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the, there was a TV show that the, the byline in the TV show was always winter is coming. Uh, be afraid. Well, with us, it's summer Summer's is coming, coming and be, be very be afraid. prepared. So, you know, be very afraid. as we march forward, and, and I, I will say that uh, we have two counties now left, uh, Talbot County and Worcester County, uh, to support our letter. our letter for the replacement bridge. And as we speak, Talbot County is discussing it, and we'll see what happens after their meeting. Uh, and then next Tuesday, we go to Tuesday. We, we take the road trip to Worcester and, and uh, see if we can plead our case and get their support also. And that's all I got. <coughs> Mr. Wilson. Hey. Uh, <coughs> First off, we had the county administrator and I were at... 911 center where we had a proclamation for the 911 dispatch people for this afternoon. They can't come because they're always on duty. So they don't get the public recognition that they should get, but uh, in this case, we went to them, gave them the proclamation, but it would be, uh, it would be uh, only fitting that they be recognized by us for their. Uh, continued good works, holidays, nights, rainy days, and uh, they're a good bunch. So that was done. Secondly, on the hurricane, I've never had to take that out of there. Uh, awareness Month, one other issue about it is we have different kinds of flooding. One is the sort of slow creep of everybody's house going underwater. And the other one is the flooding that comes with emergency events, hurricanes, and the like, and that is a subject we are going to have as commissioners to address because we have a chronic problem with our system in Queen Anne's County, which is that it's necessary because of the evacuation time on Ken Island to call evacuations days before the actual event happens causing people not to do anything about it because they're all waiting to see what the last minute weather report, does the storm turn left to right? And if the day ever comes that the storm at the last minute turns up the bay and seven or 12 or nine hours before the event hits, they all hit the road, it is going to be a traffic jam like nobody ever saw before because that is a thing that, uh, uh, emergency planning has always wrestled with and we're going to uh, have to address that so just a heads up on flood warning sir and happy easter too i forgot yeah i was going to say we had a report from steve chanley that parks and recs has discovered evidence of uh, bunny rabbit easter rabbit coming through oh. so you know it's easter time and they had an easter egg hunt i think this last weekend at that so did they find the eggs or did they find the byproduct? Not eggs, the they eggs. find, yeah. The byproduct. They've been eating. Gotcha. So be careful out there. Um, happy Easter, everybody. <laughs> I'll entertain.